Danger. The IntelliCap 2000 automatic capacitor control line voltage input range is 93 to 276 volts AC. Failure to observe the precautions below will result in serious personal injury or death. IntelliCap 2000 automatic capacitor controls are specifically designed to control pole-mounted and pad-mounted switched capacitor banks in electric distribution systems to regulate reactive power or line voltage. These reliable, easy-to-use microprocessor-based controls normally operate autonomously based on the control strategy selected. This video is designed to show three common examples of how the control is configured using a voltage-only strategy, a time clock strategy, and a VAR strategy. Much more information is available in SNC Instruction Sheet 1024-540. The IntelliCap 2000 control can be operated via SCADA commands, locally using the faceplate, or using SNC's IntelliLink setup software. We will demonstrate using the IntelliLink software. IntelliCap 2000 control software and IntelliLink setup software are bundled for download in the SNC customer portal. You need administrator access to install this software. We have a video on installing SNC IntelliLink software that can be found at snc.com slash videos. Download the software installer from the IntelliCamp 2000 workspace on the portal. Save the installer on the desktop right-click on the icon and select Run as Administrator. IntelliLink Offline Software and IntelliLink Setup Software will be installed in the SNC Electric Program Folder. Click on the IntelliLink Software icon to connect to an IntelliCap 2000 control. Click on the Local Connection button and the Product Selection dialog box opens. If you have multiple devices to control with the IntelliLink software, they will be listed here. Select IntelliCap 2000 and then click on the Serial button. Finally, click on the IntelliLink button to launch the software. From here, you can log in. The login and password can be found in the written instructions that came with your device. The IntelliLink software contains a quick access toolbar along the top, a navigation tree on the left side, and status screens in the center. You can also see the communication status along the bottom. There are many tabs and data fields in this software. This video will only introduce you to the small amount of the functionality that you need to begin configuring the control. See Instruction Sheet 1024-530 for complete information about every field in the software. Before we get into the specifics of configuring each strategy, there are settings that are universal to every control strategy. The operation screen matches the faceplate of the IntelliCap 2000 control. The page shows not only the status of the control, but gives useful metered power values. Current, VAR, and power factor measurements are only provided if current transformers are installed and wired to the IntelliCap 2000 control. When the SCADA control is set to local, the bank can be operated from the faceplate. To operate remotely, SCADA or IntelliLink software can be used. When in auto mode, under specific circumstances, operation inhibited may be active. This will inhibit the control from operating if the voltage is too low or if it has exceeded the daily automatic cycles limit. The control strategy shows which strategy is currently being used. If you intend to monitor the control remotely, you will need to set up communications on the communication screen. You can input all your information from the department that supports your field area network here. All the settings are defined in the written instructions, including Wi-Fi for controls with the optional Wi-Fi module. Security is incredibly important to the electric grid. Login and password information should never be left as default. To make changes, Navigate to Setup and choose Security. Here you can set user groups, individual passwords for each, and select what each group has access to using these checkboxes. Only users logged in as admin can make changes to this screen. The user group name can be changed for all groups except admin and viewer. 
All passwords can be changed. Passwords have no restrictions on legal characters and the max character limit is 12. A dialog box will open when clicking on the value to change. Operating the control remotely requires the IntelliLink software's remote command to be enabled. Changes made to the IntelliLink setup software are not instantly saved to the control. Instead, changes must be validated and applied. You can find those buttons on the top right of the screen and on the Validate Apply screen under Setup. The Validate button evaluates settings in the buffer memory without applying them. When changes are pending, click on the Validate button to initiate a logical check of the pending changes for errors. If the validation procedure detects an error or inconsistency, it will be displayed in the Validation Result box. The Apply button evaluates settings in the buffer memory and applies them. When changes are pending, click on the Apply button to initiate a logical check of the pending changes for errors and commit the changes to control memory if no errors are detected. A successful check will be indicated in the Validation Result box. The Reset Buffer button will not undo an Apply command. Instead, the button resets settings in the buffer memory to the presently active values. If you intend to monitor the control from a SCADA system, you need to configure SCADA points. The Point Mapping screen contains configuration parameters for DNP status points. The leftmost column provides the order of operation. Some customers begin with the default point mapping that is included when you download the IntelliCAP 2000 software. Click on File and Load Set Points, then navigate to the IntelliCAP 2000 Sample Files folder to load these files. If, at any point, you have a question about the screen you are looking at, pressing the F1 key brings up the Help section about the screen. This is a great resource to use. The IntelliCAMP 2000 control can switch the capacitor bank automatically using a variety of control strategies. To set the control to a strategy, go to the Setup, Seasons, Main screen. Then select the tab for that season and select Preferred Capacitor Bank Position for that season. First, it's important to understand how voltage overrides the other control strategies. The control works with high and low voltage override set points. If no strategy is chosen, or if the voltage only strategy is chosen, the control switches the capacitor bank based solely on these high and low voltage set points. When the control senses the voltage has passed the high voltage or low voltage override value threshold, it starts the high voltage or low voltage override time timer. If voltage remains continuously above or below these values, the control switches the bank in or out. When voltage remains within the normal range, the capacitor control switches the bank based on the preferred capacitor bank position setting. No action is taken if the none position is selected or if switching the bank would cause a voltage override condition. It's also important to understand bank voltage change plus margin or BVC plus M before configuring a strategy. The control uses BVC plus M to determine whether overrides will be exceeded by operating and will not operate the bank in such a way that doing so would raise or lower the voltage outside the override values. BVC plus M dictates a margin in which the control is inhibited from operating the bank due to a calculated assumption that operating the bank will result in voltage exceeding set thresholds. When left to default, this value is auto-calculated. BVC plus M is calculated using the average voltage delta of the next four operations plus a 25% margin. When another strategy is selected, that strategy will operate while voltage is within the normal range, but voltage will always override the chosen strategy if voltage spikes or drops outside of the normal range. The only exception is when the automatic online strategy is chosen. In this case, only the emergency voltage override settings, which are found on the General tab, are used. To set the control to a voltage-only strategy, navigate to the Season screen and choose Voltage Only from the drop-down. Set the values and times for high and low voltage override. 
a preferred capacitor bank position can also be selected by clicking on the Seasons tab and choosing from the drop-down. In this strategy, there are some fields that should be set or checked. The control will be affected by the Max Auto Cycles Per Day field on the Site Related screen. The control will be limited to this many cycles per day. On the Site Related screen, you'll find Bank Related fields. You'll want to change the emergency high and low voltage overrides if, say, for example, the capacitor bank is at the end of a very long feeder where voltage is characteristically low. On the Sensor Config screen, the sensor ratio needs a value if your system has a neutral sensor. This is always given as a user-defined value to 1 volt. Make sure the system transformer ratio is correctly set for your system. For the voltage sensor system transformer ratio, we will use 100 to 1 line to ground ratio, which would be used, for example, on a 12 kilovolt system, or 120 to 1 line to ground ratio for a 14 kilovolt system. On the same page, if the voltage sensor used has a phase shift, use the voltage sensor phase shift correction field to correct this. Finally, be sure to set the correct three-phase bank size on the Setup, General, Site-Related, Bank-Related screen according to your system. The default is 1200. The next strategy we'll look at is the time clock strategy. Essentially, this strategy tells the control to operate the bank at specific times of the day. When the automatic operation mode is enabled, and the capacitor control is in time clock strategy, the control switches the capacitor bank in for the time periods designated according to Schedule 1 and 2. If voltage goes beyond the high-low override set points, the control will switch the bank regardless of its scheduled time setting. There are a few time clock specific settings you should be aware of. For the max auto cycle setting, we'll use 10 for example, as we are not as concerned with how often the bank operates in this strategy. We will also set the tolerance tighter between the emergency high and low voltage values. These occur in a much shorter duration than the time set on the Seasons tab. The final strategy we will look at is the VAR strategy. On the Seasons page, select VAR. The high and low voltage override values must be set as usual. In the Season tab, KVARs need to be set to single or three phase according to your system. Generally, this is set to be consistent with the report power calculation value as set on the site related tab. When the automatic operation mode is enabled and the capacitor control is in the VAR strategy, it switches the capacitor bank based on measured single or three phase VARs. In order for the control to switch the bank based on measured VAR values, the VARs must exceed the switch in or switch out thresholds for the user defined time threshold. The general approach to setting the bank switches in set point is to set it at approximately 67% of the nameplate rating of the capacitor bank. The bank switches out set point can be set by subtracting 125% of the nameplate rating from the bank switches in set point. If ever voltage should exceed the high-low override threshold, the control will operate the bank on or off as appropriate. To use the VAR strategy, your system must have a current sensor installed. Values for the current sensor can be found on the Setup Sensor Config screen. Here you can choose the current sensor type that is installed. The current sensor location needs to be set to determine if the sensor is on the source or load side. The phase angle offset should also be set. If voltage and current sensors are on the same phases, it should probably be set to zero. If the sensors are on different phases, refer to instruction sheet 1024-530. You should also consider the reverse current strategy, which will dictate what the control will do if it senses a change in current flow. There are four settings to choose from. Adjusted VAR, which is the default, this will automatically reverse the current. Trip Inhibit will inhibit automatic operation while reverse current is detected. And Voltage Only will rely completely on voltage control 
and ignore current operation. The fourth setting is close and inhibit, which closes the bank when the reverse signal is detected and inhibits operation of the bank until the reverse current condition is no longer true. With these three examples, you should have a better understanding of how some of the most common seasons work in the IntelliCAP 2000 control. Further and more specific information can be found in our instruction sheets and on snc.com.